Hey, welcome to the top 10 best beers of 2014, according to me, Chad, of chadsbeerviews.com. Uh, of all the beers that I had, or that I reviewed in 2014, I should say, these were the 10 best. Um, the stipulations were no re-reviews, so, you know, it's every, only beers that I had for the first, reviewed for the first time in 2014 were eligible. It doesn't matter if they came out new this year or if they've been around for a while. Um... Some of them I did do video reviews of, and some of them I didn't. So the text reviews will just have a still image of the of the picture of the beer that I took, and I'll just read about a paragraph or two of my uh, text review, and uh, just as a voiceover. And you'll be able to just, I'll I'll put a links to all ten in the uh, description box below. So I, I I would definitely recommend you know reading the individual review of each beer, and uh, I guess that's about it. So I will see you at the end. Cheers. That is, is sweet. Like kind of like what I said on the aroma. I actually do get kind of like a cherry. Yeah, like cherry chocolate. Yeah. Like bitter chocolate. Oh, it's like, almost like chocolate covered cherry. I was gonna say that, but definitely really bitter dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get like black licorice. Uh, the cinnamon lingers. It's very kind of Christmas cookie-ish. Yeah, or like, uh, you know, you get like the spicy chocolate bars. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. That's what I, yeah, like the dark chocolate like, ones. Yeah, like a 70% dark chocolate with a bunch of peppers and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of like that, or, you know, like the, like you were saying, Christmas cookie, but the ones that are rolled in in that uh, bitter chocolate. What do you think powder? as far as the gray? Um, I would give the fresher one probably a nine, nine and a half, yeah. and take off maybe a point and a half for the, the year aging, because I just don't think it brings anything to the table. It's yeah. just not better in any way. If this is a nine, this is an eight. I or think it was seven, seven and a half. Yeah. yeah, I'm with that. Yeah, I think I'm going to go nine, eight, two. What do y'all think? I was going to go with the nine on the fresher bottle and then an eight and a half on the other one. I can't even look at them necessarily as the same beers, because tasting them side by side, they're just completely different. And going back to the, the first one, I appreciate it so much more by comparison. It is much more of that Christmas cookie, much more of that almost gingerbread man quality that yeah. I didn't necessarily appreciate the first time through. What do you think? Oh, I definitely like the 2014 better for all the reasons that have been said, so I'd be a 9-8. So everybody's in agreement, 9-8, more or less. <laughs> yeah. Number 9, Monk's Cafe Flemish Sour Ale. I'm so used to drinking American sour ales that I'd kind of forgotten the style had originated in Europe. Monk's Cafe's Flemish Sour Ale is an authentic old-world style beer, and I can see why it's maintained such high popularity all these years. There's a strong fruity flavor here, especially of black cherries, currants, and raspberries. Is that from the malt, yeast, or bacteria, or is the beer made with those fruits? I don't know. There's a light but consistent sourness from start to finish. Slightly tart at first, but finishes quite rich and sweet with notes of chocolate and vanilla. I detect the faintest hint of vinegar character, though it's more like a raspberry or maple vinaigrette. And it works perfectly here. Mmm. Yeah. That's what I like in an Imperial Stout. Just straight up. No, uh, you know, no milk. No, not Russian Imperial Stout. Not like, you know, oatmeal Imperial Stout. Not chocolate Imperial Stout. Although I do love chocolate Imperial Stouts. No bourbon barrel aging. Although I'm sure there probably is a barrel aged version of this somewhere. Um... Yeah, that is, when you want an Imperial Stout, like, this is exactly what, well, when I want an Imperial Stout, like, this is exactly the kind of palette I think of. 17 out of 20, which is a 4.5, which is that border, that is the lowest I can give a 10. 4.5 4 to 5.0 is a 10 out of 10 in my book, and I, I would agree with that. I mean, I think it's a great beer. There are better ones, but this one's really good. So, yeah, there you go. 10 out of 10 for Great Divide Yeti. Number 7, White Birch Small Batch Ale Sour Brown. I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm more impressed when new breweries can make an awesome sour than an Imperial IPA or Stout. I've tried most of White Birch's lineup and found it to be pretty good across the board, but their sours have been nothing short of fantastic. I think the Small Batch Sour Brown might be the best of them. It's a delicious combination of genuine brown ale and the allure of sour. The sour flavor is, not surprisingly, the first thing I notice about the palate. It's not quite as intense as some others, though it is far from mild. 
Slight vinegar notes, the acidity really comes through. The rich brown ale brew is in no way obscured. I get notes of chocolate, brown sugar, vanilla, and maybe a hint of coffee all through the middle. More sourness on the back end with a slight berry or fruity-like flavor. Number six, Maine Beer Company's Another One. I rated three beers by the main company a full 10 out of 10 this year. It was difficult trying to decide which of them I'd use for this list. The other two were uh, Wheeze and King Titus. I opted for another one because it was the most memorable experience of the three. This beer definitely follows the path play, uh, blazed by Hetty Topper and many brews of the style. There's a light maltiness with notes of honey, but otherwise the hops dominate. A delectable delivery of tropical and stone fruit right off the rip. Pineapple, mango, passion fruit, pomegranate, etc. It's less citrusy per se, but there's an underlying spiciness which becomes very apparent on the second half. Notes of basil, pesto, and oregano can be found too. It's definitely bitter, but not aggressively so. Just the right amount of IBUs to wow the palate without ruining it. Smells like what it's supposed to be. It tastes like what it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, like I taste that kind of candy, you know, Reese's peanut peanut butter cup flavor. Like it's there right away, and then it kind of takes a back seat, and you get the. It says it's a. I'm looking on the website. It says it's a traditional robust porter brew. I would agree with that. I mean, you get plenty of chocolate, like chocolate candy taste, but you get the actual base robust porter in there. So you do get, you know, a touch of coffee, that like deeply roasted malt, and then on the finish, you get that delicious uh, candy peanut butter flavor. Again. Yeah. So there you go. Ten out of ten for Duclaw's Sweet Baby Jesus. Um, yeah, so I mean, like immediately up front, you get like, this kind of sweet, kind of juicy flavor. Um, just you know, citrus, passion fruit, tropical fruit, you name it. Just like as you swallow it, and you get like the the aftertaste. That's when the the kind of garlicky kind of sensation. It's kind of like a little bit of garlic and black pepper, but it's not. I like. I think Hetty Topper and some of the other ones are like really out there with that, that kind of spice and this is more subtle 4.6 that's a 10 for the hop ranch i think yeah it's an outstanding beer if you can find this definitely pick it up um uh, this type of beer would seem to lend itself to any kind of wood barrel aging um especially that rum that vanilla i mean because palm king is already a pretty sweet pumpkin pie tasting beer and then you put it in rum barrels and you're just like adding tons more vanilla and like slight slight spiciness to it it's really good just pumpkin pie um although the cinnamon the cinnamon crust i mean that's the the, the signature the trademark with southern tier pumpkin is that it just it tastes like the crust it tastes like cinnamon uh graham cracker really mm fantastic overall i'm going to give this an 18 and a 20 which gives it a total score of 4.6 which is a 10 10 out of 10 on my scale i totally agree with that i think it's a outstanding world-class beer number two castile winter which this is actually a 2013 vintage bottle the belgians aren't known for adding confectionery flavors and other additives like coffee and chocolate into their beers that's what makes castile winter a very surprising brew since it's not the kind of beer i'd associate with that country and yet, it works as both a classic Belgian strong dark ale as well as a flavored brew. It's a win-win. Strong dark chocolate flavors envelop the tongue right away. It's a delicious, authentic, candy-like flavor. It doesn't taste like simply cocoa powder or some kind of extract flavoring. There's a light bitterness through the middle, somewhat dry with a hint of spice. It quickly morphs into a sweet iced coffee flavor with cream and sugar. The alcohol lingers in the background, constantly imparting a warmth and a rum-like vanilla flavor. The classic Belgian yeast esters are also noticeable. They create for a mild taste of dark fruits and spice. Overall, this is one of the most unique Belgian beers I can ever recall having. All right, so right up front, I get a, a delicious chocolate, almost milk chocolate taste. Uh, very sweet. Um, maybe a little bit of like... Um, cocoa, uh, brown sugar type things in there. I'd imagine that sweetness is probably coming from 
the death of a contract brewer, the or, the uh, reunion, which is a, like an imperial. If you haven't had that, that's a great beer. The reunion that they do with uh, uh, Terrapin. Uh, definite. Uh, there's there's like a dank hoppy character right through the middle. Kind of sticky resin. It's not like I wouldn't call this like a super uh, especially bitter beer though. Uh, it's not. It's well balanced. I'll give it that. But it's not like it's not like a black IPA or anything like that. Like the hops are in the background, but I do notice them. I do like the the resiny kind of piney character that they give the beer. And then on the back end is when you start to get the sourness. The tartness. I get like I, same thing with the aroma. I get like a black currant. So there you go. Ten out of ten for the 2014 Funky Jubilation. It is. It's really impressive. If you see it, pick it up. This was this bottle was 12.49, worth every penny. Uh, and there's if you can find an older vintage, consider yourself lucky. Just get it, buy it, drink it. You'll like it. All right. So that was my top ten best beers of 2014. Be sure to check out my book, The Handbook of Porters and Stouts, available everywhere, Amazon, you name it, local bookstore. I'll put a link in the description box if you want to check it out. Again, links to all the text reviews of all these beers are in the description box. Check out the previous uh, 2009 through 2013 top 10 best beers. And be sure to check out the top 10 worst beers, which will be coming soon. So, thanks for watching, and have a good new year, and I'll see you in 2015. Bye.